All right, I'd like to call this meeting of the House Transportation Committee to order. Appreciate everybody being here and the committee members. Uh, at this time, I'd like to ask Representative Burns if he could give us a report of the Resolutions Committee. What's your mic number? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Your subcommittee on resolutions did duly meet and, and considered several resolutions that, um, that we took up. And the, the first one was House Resolution 1609 by Representative Dobson dealing with the Lake Spivey Parkway. Representative Dobson is here. It did re uh, receive a due pass recommendation from the subcommittee, and that's what we would like to report back to this committee on House Resolution 1609. Another resolution we took up was um, Senate Resolution by su um, 282 by substitute. That was named the John Lee Drake Senior Highway um, by Senator Bullock. That resolution, all Senate Resolution by substitute, also did receive a due pass recommendation by committee. We um, also considered Senate Resolution 682, the J. Alton Wingate Senior Memorial Parkway by Senator Schaefer. That the 686, excuse me. I'm having that Larry O'Neill stuff where I can't read somebody's writing <laughs> because of my age and my eyesight. But uh, Senate Resolution 686 was duly considered and it was given a due pass recommendation by committee. Senate Resolution 639, the Sergeant Mike Stokely Memorial Highway uh, by Senator Seaball was presented to uh, by the committee by Representative Horn and and, and it had met all the requisite requirements and it received a due pass uh, back to the full committee from our subcommittee on resolutions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Representative Burns. At this time, any comment? Do I hear a motion on these? Is there a second? Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. And all opposed, same sign. Appreciate y'all coming and uh, y'all work it from here and uh, it'll, it'll go. Okay, at this time, I'd like to recognize uh, Representative Jones, if she approached the mic. Thank you. I got it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, members of the committee, I've got two, one resolution and one bill. The first one is House Bill 1589. And both of these I wanted to bring for your consideration so that y'all can um, take the time to look at some of the issues that uh, each of them would uh, to bring up and then uh, I'd be happy to uh, do what the will of the, the the pleasure of the committee in terms of going forward first one House Bill 1589 simply changes the term length of the chairman of the uh, transportation board from one year to two years there were some members uh, from this committee who had recommended that that it might um, give them more time to actually do something from the time you're elected at one year seems pretty short. Um, the second resol the resolution, uh, House Resolution 1666, it's another simple one. It would require uh, a constitutional amendment. Uh, the question would be, and this really just tells you what it does, shall the Constitution of Georgia be amended so as to change the length of the terms of the members of the state board from five years to two years? And um, I've had a number of, I mean, some of you may know this has been a you know, kind of an under, the, it's been a topic of conversation for a while, certainly as long as I've been in the legislature. And, and I think it's one, a healthy discussion that we should have. As you know, we served two years, senators served two years, the Congress, within the congressional districts, within uh, transportation board members serve, the congressmen serve two years. I don't know of an, another elected person that actually gets five years. There may be one, but uh, it does not seek to change how the board members are elected. They would continue to be elected by the uh, legislators who represent a piece of that congressional district. But it would make it, uh, it, would, it would change the term length to two years uh, to be more in line with what other, um, with us, congressmen and state senators. I do think it would bring about, um, and it certainly has nothing to do with my board members, I have two right now because of redistricting. Uh, it would do several things. Every time we do redistrict, it would um, bring them in line more, I think on a, more in line with when we redistrict the congressional districts, because then they would just have the two terms and the redistricted uh, 
uh, the uh, districts, but more than anything, as we all know, uh, and I think voters intuitively know, there's tends to be more responsiveness and accountability when you have a shorter term. Y'all can just imagine if we put the same question on the ballot, changing our term length to five years, you can just imagine what the voters uh, would decide. In fact, as I recall, about 15 years ago, uh, there was a ballot uh, question to change our term length to four years, and it um, lost by 82 percent. So um, I think it is probably something Georgians uh, would be interested in and legislators. I can't think of another topic that generates more interest, certainly in the metropolitan area, but becoming all over the state than transportation. You know, folks turn to their local school boards for a lot of education issues, but they look to the state. Uh, to solve the major transportation problems. I'd be happy to take any questions. Okay, thank you, Ms. Jones. Uh, microphone 23. Uh, Ms. Jones, would this in any way have term limits? Uh, no, it, uh, no term limits. That it would be just like us, an unlimited number of terms, but just up for re-election like us every two years. Okay, Representative Smith. Representative Jones, uh, being the old man on the committee and being on transportation for 22 years, are you familiar with why it was changed to a five-year term? Um, I, I, I do have a general understanding, and you you uh, did um, mention again to me this morning, sort of as a, as a way to make them a bit more autonomous mm -hmm. and to have um, less uh, become less political. I guess was. Um, ultimately, but I'd be happy for you to describe it better. Well, of course, uh, you know, it was taken out of politics many years ago by not letting them go through just one governor's term. And right. that was even before I came here, and I've been here forever. But uh, my question is, under your plan, you could have a totally new board every two years if the voters so chose. Let's see, I believe they would be staggered. But you're on a two-year term, so you could still have a new one every three years then, okay. Right. It, it just like us. I mean, we could have a whole new legislature every two years, but I think you could have ultimately a, a new board of commissioners every, or board of uh, transportation board every two, every four years. Do you know what the salary is of a DOT commissioner? I, I don't know if it's the same, less, or more than what we make. Just per diem. Okay. And, uh, you know, trying to run a race every two years, in my opinion, could be a little difficult to get qualified people. But we have a DOT, and, and mind you, I find fault with them every day. But we have one that's been the tops in the nation in maintenance of our roads and highways for year after year after year with one of the lowest taxes. So uh, what are you going to gain by doing this? Uh, well, first of all, I'll just mention, I, I don't think there's any cost involved in running a DOT um, election, unlike us, which we can have fairly significant election cost up to, they say, 100, 150,000. But um, I think the same thing that you, you would gain is what you gain by us having two-year terms. Is there any possibility that with short terms like this and so much turnover that you would wind up with bureaucrats like Larry running DOT? Larry, no offense, man. <laughs> well, I... I find Larry does an excellent job, um, so I won't comment on that. I, I think it is unlikely you would have the kind of turnover that you're projecting. I mean, the voters of Georgia could say the same thing for us, and as you know, incumbents, they do. incumbents are, are, are greatly favored for uh, re-election. In fact, in the last freshman class, uh, certainly on the Republican side, there was only one Republican that was incumbent that was replaced by a Republican. In most cases, it was because of change in party affiliation, which is not an issue with the DOT board. Well, you know, we are real fortunate to have a former DOT board member as a member of our committee. And I think we ought to let him tell you what he thinks the effect would be if he's so brave. He'd have to mash it button. Yep. Thank you, Representative Jones. I understand then that um, Representative Smith explained to you that the purpose was to take politics out of the DOT. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's occurred by having five-year terms? Um, not particularly, um, and but I, I do think, just again, as I mentioned earlier, shorter terms in general 
uh, even an uninformed voter who goes to vote as they did 15 years ago on extending our length, they intuitively know that shorter terms make uh, the elected person more accountable and more responsive. We don't know how good it could be, and this is not a judgment on the current board or, or the Department of Transportation in how well they're doing, but I, um, I do think it's, it's an appropriate discussion to have as to whether their terms should match our length and the congressional length. And I guess back to Representative Smith's question about um, keeping them in there for a little while, maybe there's too much turnover. I guess I, w I would tend to think that if the board member is doing a good job, and I agree that most of them are, then the uh, those who elect them would probably continue electing them because certainly that's the purpose that we all uh, desire is to have a good uh, DOT board and a good department and everything working well and we all agree with. So I, that, I don't That's see what we find. Now. I mean, I'd certainly love to run for re-election with only 40 voters to have to satisfy uh, and, and their constituents versus um, 45,000. Oh, Representative, with this, where would where would we start? Uh, would all board members be up for election in two years? Uh, how would we have them on a staggered term? Is part <coughs> going to be elected? Uh, They'll all be staggered because each member that's in office now will serve out their term, and as you know, they're staggered, and then. At the, at, at the time that their current term ends, then they would begin a two-year term. Is, is that covered mm -hmm. in here? I believe it I is, yes. Uh, the members of the board in office January 1, 2007 shall uh, serve out the remainder of the respective terms, line 12, page 1. The General Assembly shall provide by law the procedure for the election of the members, which will be the same as it is now. and. Um, members shall serve for terms of two years until their successors are elected and qualified. So they would be just as staggered as they are now, just two-year terms instead of five-year terms. Uh, I'm going to throw out just a comment myself. Uh, well, let's see, we've got one more question. Mike, 25. <laughs> Representative Burns. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll just speak to it. Um, I had certainly had the honor of, and privilege of serving a couple of years on DOT and certainly have great respect for the board members over there now and um, certainly for the department. And um, you do serve without pay. You do receive um, um, your per diem as you come to Atlanta. And I found that that was two days a month in most cases um, when, we were, when I was away from home, basically for the entire portion of time, entire time on those days. But I found that... Um, the job turned in from maybe a two-day-a-month job to probably a day, day and a half, two days a week job for me. As, um, as I attempted to service the constituents in the 12th Congressional District, right. and I guess that's one of the things is where they're not full-time politicians, al although many of them have been in elected position, have gone out, but for people who are new to the process like I was, and like several of the gentlemen that serve over there, over there now that I'm familiar with, it's, it takes a while to form those relationships. Um, the congressional district, districts encompass pretty large territories in rural Georgia. It's important that you get out and learn who you're dealing with and what you're, and, and the subject matter. Even though we all know about roads, there's a lot more that goes on with the department that you need to be knowledgeable of. And um, I think it's important. Um, could, could the five-year term keep, could be adjusted? Anything can be looked at. Two-year terms are, are pretty short. Um, I find that my congressman and my representatives and my senators running every two years are constantly running, mm -hmm. and maybe not as uh, as um, able to look at tending to, to some of the state's business and the people's business as they could be, because they're constantly running. And I think that we would um, certainly impose this same process on DOT board members. They're also um, they're dealing with an inform informed electorate. When they um, those 40 people, in my, I think I had 32 or 33 people that were in my district when I ran that I had to influence in one way or the other. And they certainly knew more about what I was doing than I knew. And they are informed, and you don't always have that in the, uh, when we go out in politics with 45,000 people. So it is an informed electorate that elect you. And um, certainly I think most of the DOT board members strive to um, work very closely with their elected representatives. And uh, 
think by and large they do a good job. It's a large department. They have a good staff over there. But um, is there some tweaking that can occur? Sure, there always is. I don't know of any, any person of any body that can't stand any improvements. But um, they also, at the present time, and I'm, I'm, I'm almost positive that it's not changed, not by law do they serve the chairman, does the chairman serve a two-year term, but by agreement among board members at this current time, they're serving a two-year term so that you have that ability to familiarize yourself mm -hmm. um, with the position and what goes on and those responsibilities. So uh, I would suggest that we take an awful hard look at this before we uh, alter those terms to a two-year term. I'm just not sure at this point from, from where I sit that it would be a real benefit to the people of Georgia, but uh, certainly be something we could look at. I, I appreciate your perspective since you, at, you you did serve on the board. I would like to respond to a couple of things. One is the pay. That's a separate issue to me. If um, we need to uh, provide a bit more remuneration for the the job, then that, that is a separate issue that um, I don't think needs to get mixed up in with what how long the term is. Um, number two, you, meant, you did mention the time to get to know the, di the district, the breadth of the, di the issues. I just can't believe that it's any different for a congressman who, who serves a two-year term in the same district or, frankly, uh, one of us. Uh, when you consider all the different issues we have to get to know, you did mention the, uh, an informed electorate. I wish I had as informed an electorate to uh, run within a district for. Uh, I think that's a plus and, frankly, even uh, a, a plus for a shorter term because you don't have to get out like we do with direct mail and all the costs. You know, the cost of running, it, it, I don't think you could put the two in the same league. The cost of running for a DOT uh, seat and what we have to expend. Uh, remember, you only have 40 uh, constituents there, really, that you're serving. And uh, that's a little different than 45,000 or 650,000 in a congressional district. But it is, um, and, it, and it is certainly, I do want to make it clear, n not meant uh, to, uh, to disparage in any way any current, previous, or future board member. It just, I, I do think that there is room, as you mentioned, to tweak the length of the district, uh, the terms. I've certainly seen this on appropriations, and there, there's, a number of us on appropriations feel this way. You know, we look at all the different agencies, whether it's higher ed, education, and none of them have a dedicated funding stream that you just, you know, about can't touch. And then not, you add to that a five-year term, and, um, and I, I just find it hard anyone could argue that we are treating this one element of Georgia, a very important, very important uh, service that we offer to Georgia and becoming more important as we grow uh, and have more and more congestion. And we're treating it differently than we are other important functions like education, higher ed, and uh, anything else, health and human services. And, I, not, and I, I do think it deserves a debate as to whether we should continue to treat it as differently than we do any other aspect of service that Georgia provides. I'm going I'm to take one more question. At that time, I'm going to make a recommendation to the committee, and then y'all can discuss what I'd like to recommend on one more question. Uh, Mr. Chairman, not so much a question, just a couple of comments. I uh, appreciate Representative Jones' remarks, and uh, she took a lot of my comments uh, right out of my mouth there just a moment ago. But also um, in response to my friend Representative Burns, I think he's made some good points. Yes. One thing that uh, uh, was not mentioned by Representative Jones, though, is it, a comparison between the job that we do as representatives and those uh, the job that's done by the State Transportation Board members, um, I think, would reveal that we're dealing with a much wider range of issues than Transportation Board members are. And I think that uh, that certainly makes our job even more challenging than that that the Transportation Board members undertake because we're not only trying to uh, keep up with those broad range of issues, but all the different faces and, and names that, that go along with those both in our district and here in Atlanta. And um, I, I think that there is an argument to be made that, that transportation board members, while they do have a, a larger district they have to cover, certainly have a, a more narrow focused range of issues that they have to hone in on. And uh, I, I think it's worth a debate. Um, mm -hmm. I would like to hear more about the, uh, you know, the, the specifics of the proposal, and I'd also like to know what uh, some of the transportation board members think. And and uh, I appreciate 
Representative Burns' comments. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Representative Hatfield. This is what I'd like to recommend to the committee. I think we had some good discussion, good debate. Um, a lot of issues probably still have some answers. We need to find some answers. We may need to look at some other states around us and, and see maybe what they do with their boards. And I've, I've always said we look around, we see what they do, and then we come back and be the leader. So um, we've got a great board now, and we'll, we'd love to hear from them. I'd like to recommend to the committee that we just put this not in any one certain subcommittee. I just put it in a transportation House Transportation Study Committee, something we don't have to pass legislation on. I'd just like to be able to call a couple of meetings uh, in the next few months and notify each member and let everybody come, invite the DOT board, open it to the public, and let everybody discuss it and see what we come up with. So that'd be a, any discussion on that? I'd like to make that in form of motion. All right, now, is there any discussion on the motion? And we can decide when and where, and we'll, we'll talk about that too. But, I'd like to thank Ms. Jones for coming, Representative Jones, and discussing that. And if you could gather some stats and, and uh, talk I'll, to I'll do some research on other states and history and you know, right. what it could mean. And, and maybe we ought to throw into their remuneration of the, of the Transportation Board. I mean, that, if that is an issue, then um, they do serve a valuable uh, service to right. Georgia. It's very important to certainly my constituents and all of you here. And so um, we might. Do a little re I'll do some research on that too. Very good. Thank, Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Representative Jones. We've got a motion and a second on the floor. All in favor say aye. Uh, All opposed, same sign. Any other comments? Uh, there's going to be a full transportation committee meeting Monday morning at 9 o'clock. Monday morning at 9 o'clock. And right here in 406, unless you're otherwise notified. So, uh, and let me also announce that in the morning at 8 o'clock, we're glad to have GBT that's hosting a breakfast at the depot in the blue room. It is a transportation breakfast, and unfortunately, you'll have to listen to me for five minutes, and then I won't say unfortunately for the Senate Transportation Chairman, Representative Stevens, and um, and, and, and Chairman David Doss. And it, yeah, well, we're going to take roll, so if you're not there, we'll, we'll know about it. Uh, a subcommittee bill coming out of uh, Representative Barry Fleming. Uh, what's your bill number, 284? 285, Senate Bill 285, and he, he's, we'll have a, he's had a subcommittee meeting. Yes, sir, Representative Schnell. Uh, eight o'clock breakfast. What time? Eight o'clock rules. I guess I'm going to have to get an excuse to uh, miss rules. All right, thank you.